Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. My name is Jamana Tarek Nabil Abdurazik. I'm studying for a master's degree in petroleum engineering at University of Houston, and I will be your moderator this afternoon. Today, we're pleased to welcome Dr. Yasser Shaib, a very special guest from Egypt. Dr. Yasser got his back bachelor's degree in mining engineering from Cairo University in 1990 and had his PhD from AC School of Mines in France on the contribution of fuzzy logic to geotechnical risk assessment of some ancient tombs of uh, the Valley of the Kings in Egypt. Okay. He had a major role in setting up the Euro-Mediterranean policies and dialogues on higher education, research, innovation, and culture. Dr. Yasser currently works as a professor of engineering at the American University in Cairo, and today he will share with us his expert opinion on quantitative data analysis. This will be the last session for this course. We will definitely miss Dr. Yasser Shayab on Cairo if you haven't already, please make sure to check out our previous sessions on Pyre Petro YouTube channel and join our Facebook page, Arab Oil and Gas, for the latest updates on our September courses. Please feel free to send your questions in the chat box and we will answer as many questions as possible. With that, I give you the, um, I ask you to give your full attention to Dr. Yasser Shaib and help me in welcoming him. Please welcome Dr. Yasser Shaib. Hi, Dr. Yasser. Thanks for joining us today. And for the last time to pick up where we left off in the quantitative data analysis course. Thank you very much, Jomana. It's, um, it's a pleasure to be here as usual with you, dear students and colleagues and, uh, and friends uh, speaking about quantitative data analysis. Uh, today is the last time, and uh, as Jumana said, I'll, I'll miss the, this, this course. I like it very much. It's one of my favorites, actually, in my teaching career. Um, today, uh, today's session is a very special session. It's the last one, and it's going to be not so long. I don't expect that we will stay for, for a long time, but I will just try to open some horizons for, uh, for, for discussions. Um, this was the course plan that we've started with. Uh, and those were the sessions that we've spoken about. Um, in the very first session, we had some introduction. I had the presentation about randomness and how this world is being governed by randomness sometimes and how, how humanity have tried to, to, um, to, to tame maybe uh, the, the, this randomness in the world. Uh, by developing some equations, by continuing to develop some equations, by some of us working on data, some of us working on data banks, and, and so on. Um, in a, in a, I think it was in the same session where we, where we, where we spoke also about uh, some statistics, some basic statistics. No, it was the second session. But we spoke about the, the, the basic statistics, and uh, I put it in between parentheses as a reminder, because... Um, this course is not about statistics, and it's not about uh, giving you mathematical background and three kilometers long equations and, uh, and proofs and, and so on and so forth. But um, sometimes it's interesting, it's important that we remind ourselves of some of the basic statistics, basic concepts that we've had throughout our education years. Sometimes, I mean, uh, I, I, th I believe that the first time that any one of us have, have heard about the mean average score was maybe when he was in elementary school or basic education, maybe year six, maybe year seven of his uh, K-12 uh, education system. Um, then uh, with the time we start, I mean, some of us would move into a more mathematical uh, discipline. Some of us will move towards more of uh, literature uh, education, but uh, usually we still hear about those means average, uh, medians, modes, variance, standard deviation sometimes, and, uh, and so on and so forth. And this was actually the, 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 the main reason, is to remind ourselves that those concepts exist, that we should maybe look into them once again, but not to look into them from a mathematical point of view about, I mean, i.e. How to, how to calculate them, but more of uh, what's the physical meaning of um, of a mean? What's the physical meaning of a median? What does it mean to say that the median of the population is 30 years old? What does that mean? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it what? What does it mean when I say that the mean of a population is 50 years with a standard deviation of 1.2 years? 
what does that mean? How can we, um, what's the mental image that we will have for that, uh, for, for, for that population? For that, we, we worked also, I mean, I had also a small uh, slide speaking about probability theory and um, the probability of an event happening. And of course, the example of the dice, throwing the dice and having any number that is between one and six with an equal uh, probabilities, and then throwing two dices together and maybe sometimes throwing maybe 100 dices and trying to extract some information from, um, from those dices. And um, I ended up uh, speaking about some statistical distribution uh, distribution, sorry, binomial distribution, um, I think Poisson distribution, and the very famous normal distribution that everyone is using, that everyone is, is, is working on. That was statistics. Then uh, we moved to data analysis, where we spoke about the matrix, what is the data matrix, so what I call the data matrix, which is the table of data that, that we have. And then we spoke about this cycle of, uh, of, of analysis that we start by having a problem or asking a question, then elaborating the data, then exploring the data, then um, having some maybe a prediction of the data and, and, and so on. And uh, one of the, um, the very important uh, topics in that uh, aspect that I kept coming back to it, uh, uh, lecture after lecture was data preparation. And again, for maybe the 100th time, and I will not uh, uh, stop saying so, data preparation is very important. Data preparation could um, save ourselves um, a lot of time when we do the analysis. And usually data preparation takes about 60 to 80% of our time of um, a, data a data analysis uh, a cycle, a whole cycle. So we spend a lot of time doing uh, preparation. Different types of preparation that that we can we can look into uh, and we've we've spoken about maybe briefly. Then um, we had a session, a complete session about visual data analysis and how visuals. I mean, how how uh, uh, data info. I mean, uh, data could be projected uh, on um, using a single variable and then maybe multiple variables, maybe three, four, five, six variables together, and how to cross information together in a visual way and how to see uh, uh, information about, uh, ab about the data. And in this aspect, actually, I would like to draw your attention to um, a website that is, uh, let, me, let me go and, and search for it, because it shows uh, a lot of information about the visuality of the data. Uh, visual cap. Yes, this one, this website, it's called the Visual Capitalist. And well, forget about the, the, the name, maybe the Visual Capitalist says something. Um, I'm, I'm not sure about that, but um, this website, it shows a lot of studies, a lot of data, a lot of information drawn or let's say presented in a visual way without any, any maybe access to the data itself, but it, it, it gives us some, I mean, it captures the, the, the attention. Um, for example, here, I mean, it has um, like every day there is something new going on in this visual capitalist and you can, you can also receive an, an email every, every, every day with the latest in the, in the, in the, in the individuals in the charts. Um, visualizing the social media universe in 2020. And um, I'm sure that, uh, well, yeah, it seems that they are comparing like uh, how, peop how many people are using different types of social media with, uh, with the size of a, of a planet, for example. So Facebook is on the top, WhatsApp, followed by YouTube, Messenger, and apparently the, the most use, you use, I mean, people who use it most are in the US. Then we have WeChat in China, then we have Instagram in the US, TikTok in China, and then, I don't know, QQ, I don't know what's that. But, well, you know, you, you would find a lot of, a lot of those uh, social media, uh, um, a lot of data here and there. You can, uh, I've seen something on, yes, uh, uh, this is uh, COVID-19 and uh, the pandemic of COVID-19, how the, 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 the pandemic is moving, 
what's the new daily new confirmed cases in all around the world and you can search for your country and you can look into it uh, i'm stopping here just by, by by coincidence and this is canada and this is the curve this is the the development let's say of the covid-19 cases in in canada australia is here denmark is here estonia is here finland i mean every country in the world is here apparently so it would be maybe difficult to to identify a specific country or your country that that, that you'd like to but but at the end it's it's a visual way to show a lot of information so there is a lot a lot a lot a lot of information that is in a graph like this uh, um, for example and this shows uh, how visuals uh, could be uh, uh, could, could reveal a lot of information. I don't know what's that. I just clicked just like, like that map, the European CBD landscape. I don't know what CBD stands for. Uh, short for, can you be, can you, can I buy doll? Okay, well, uh, let's not speak about that for the moment. <clears throat> yes, I mean, visualize how much revenue automakers generate every second. So, the major uh, automotive uh, companies, how much revenue they generate every second. So you can you can see that Volkswagen Group, for example, for example, it generates something like nine thousand two hundred and two uh, dollars per second. Of course, I mean if you can extract that to to per day and per month and per year and and so on. And again, it's a small graph that shows everything. So this is Volkswagen Group. This is uh, number five is General Motors, number two is Toyota, number three is Ford, Honda, and so on and so forth. Visual data analysis is very important in, in the world that we are living in today. And it's, it's really um, changing the way we perceive things. I mean, the way we, 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 we understand things. That once you see something on a, on, a, on a graph, you understand it better and you are able to reason uh, in a different way. So visual data analysis, once again, is, is very important, but the more important is how to project it and how to use it and how to, to present it. And of course you can, can present it in, in, in different ways as, as I just showed you now, three or four or five different graphs, everyone is speaking about different thing. And all of those are within this category of uh, visual data analysis. Then in the, in the, in the session afterwards, we spoke about the exploratory uh, uh, methods, and specifically, we spoke about two uh, two methods: the the principal component analysis and the clustering analysis. The principal component analysis and the clustering analysis are exploratory techniques, i.e., they don't interfere. I mean, we don't interfere at all. We don't uh, predict something. We just try to understand the underlying structure of the data. So you have a data and you have a data matrix. You've, you've seen it in a different way. You've projected the data maybe on a, on a map. You maybe have projected and, and using a histogram or a, or a 2D plot or whatever plot that, that you're using. Now you want to explore it. You want to understand the structure of this data. How is it uh, behaving with, 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 with respect to each other? And this is where we employ exploratory data, data analysis. So we spoke about principal component analysis, which is a reduction uh, of variables uh, tool that we use. If you have 15 variable in your, uh, in your data and you would like to see, see, really see how those 15 variables are behaving with respect to each other, it would be very difficult. Because as we spoke at that time, if you, you need like a space of a 15 dimension in order to see that, uh, that cloud or that, 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 that this type of information. So we employ principal component analysis on correlation metrics and, and so on and so forth. And at the end, we have like two variables or two new variables, two new dimensions, two new, we call them principal components, two new principal components. And those two new principal components, they carry with them um, most of the data that exists in the 15 uh, variable uh, data matrix that we started with. And it's a, it's a reduction way. So it's, it, 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 it's a way to show a map of the, of the variables together and how they are interacting with each other, how they are correlating with each other, how they affect each other. 
what's independent, what's dependent, and so on and so forth. It's a very interesting tool, and we always use the, the principal component analysis to explore um, the data that we have. Then we spoke about clustering analysis, how to cluster the data, how to, to differentiate between the data in smaller groups. We have like, we have now 44 people and 34 participants in, the, in, the, in this lecture, in the webinar, live and, and on Zoom. Um, and I'm sure that some of them are similar to each other. Some of them are not similar to each other with respect to a number of variables that we have. So using clustering analysis, we, be able, we will be able to uh, understand who is similar to who, depending, of course, on the data that we have uh, that, that we've collected. Um, so we are not, again, we are not uh, predicting something. We are just understanding the interrelationship between individuals, the interrelationship between variables, and so on and so forth. That's exploratory data analysis. Then the last time, we spoke about um, inferential or predictive data analysis. And the, the, the main idea behind uh, uh, predictive data analysis is that the past is the key for the future. So what happened in the past? I mean, we don't have a, a very specific reason that this thing that happened in the past will not continue into at least the very near future. I mean, if we speak about collecting data about, for example, uh, um, how we as, as, as 45 people now in, the, in this Zoom uh, lecture, what is the type of food that we are getting, that we are eating throughout the past two years, day by day? There is no specific reason, I would say, that tomorrow or after tomorrow or maybe next week, we will change that pattern. If we will be able to have a pattern of uh, consumption of food for myself over the past uh, two years or one year even, there's no specific reason that this pattern will not continue tomorrow and after tomorrow and the, then the week after. And actually, this is what we call the regression. So we have um, a model. We have, uh, no, 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 yeah, we have a behavior that we observe. We have a variable that we observe or a number of variables that we observe. And when we observe those number of variables, we estimate, we, we think, we consider that the behavior of that of that variable is following. I mean, when we see it on a on a, on a two D graph, we think that this behavior is following a straight line. So, if we will take that straight line and then project into the future, there is no apparent reason, statistically and scientifically and mathematically, that why this line will break and will will be uh, something different. Of course, it can happen. I mean, we've seen it happening with, uh, with COVID-19. I mean, things that just come like that and, and change everything that, that, that humanities is, uh, is doing. But um, generally speaking, we are still uh, doing tomorrow what we've done yesterday, more or less, with some uh, changes. So usually when we do that, we, we, we study the past and then we try to project into, um, into the future. And um, to do that, we need to have uh, maybe um, to, to understand the underlying function, to understand the underlying model. What is the model of behavior of that variable, of those variables, of, that, of this data over the past period? And then we can project into, um, into the future. Last time, I spoke about uh, two methods for, for doing that, analysis of the variance and how can we differentiate between, between the groups and the uh, regression analysis. And I think that I spoke longly about uh, regression and how regression is actually helping us, humanity, to, um, to predict uh, the future of uh, COVID-19, for example, what would happen. Uh, I mean, I can, I can estimate, and I know people that, that does that, that they, we can predict with a, with a very good accuracy um, how many uh, people will die tomorrow from uh, COVID-19. How many people will be infected tomorrow from COVID-19 in the US, in Egypt, in uh, Canada, in Japan, in France, in Spain, any country in the world, or all around the world? Also, we can we also do build some models like that 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 we can that we can look at, and that's actually the the, the main reason why we do uh, why we do. Now today, I'm going to 
actually um, not speak uh, in details about uh, some tools, but I would be looking into some trends. I mean, uh, data analysis as a science started maybe in the 1940s, 1950s with some statistics and then uh, we were trying to, to understand what, what, what's going on in the data. Then with the explosion of computer tools and computer applications, and there's like, I, I, can, I can cite at least three or four free tools that does data analysis that exist uh, uh, and, and on, on the internet today, and at least tens of, uh, um, of paid for uh, tools also that does also data analysis. But then things are changing. I mean, with the time we, we've observed that things are changing and people are, sometimes they, they, they focus on more or less uh, different aspects of it. For example, uh, let, me, let me show you this. With the, with, the, with the explosion, with the expansion of the number of data that we um, that we store in our or on our computers and in our uh, in our data banks and using watches like this, using iWatch, using Google Watch, using uh, uh, Samsung Watch as well. I mean, there's a lot of data that is stored about every each and every one of us. When you go to the bank, there is a data that is stored about you. When you uh, move with your car in the street, there is a data that is stored about your GPS and so on. When you take a metro or you take a, um, a bus, there is a data that is also stored about you. When you do um, a medical examination, there is a data that is stored about you. And all of this data is, I mean, is, that's, when you actually, when you do some purchase on the, on the internet, there is a uh, data that's stored about you. And when you also uh, navigate through the internet, there is a lot of data that is stored about you. So everything is now is being I mean, uh, uh, transformed into, into data and this data is stored in huge data banks. Now, of course, those who store the data, they don't just store it for, for fun, for pleasure. They store it because they want to use it. And we have started seeing a lot of uh, studies that are uh, actually driven by, uh, completely by data. And let me start by this correlation that doesn't make sense. I mean, I'll start this here. And um, I went here to my web browser and typed here correlation that doesn't make sense. So this is my uh, search uh, statement. And when I, when I wrote that, I had this images and you have here a lot of correlations that doesn't make any sense. But I will show you how can we, uh, how can we use it. So this is one of them. U.S. spending on science, space, and technology is correlating with suicides by hanging, strangulation, and suffocation. And you have this uh, graph. Okay, interesting. So uh, those are the years. Here is the amount that the U.S. spending on science, space, and technology. And here you have another scale for the number of suicides. And we see here that they are pretty much correlated to each other. If I will, if I will calculate the correlation factor between those two uh, variables, I suspect that it would be uh, something like uh, 90, 95%. Uh, yeah, it's, it's actually 99.79%. Okay, this means that they are very much correlated. Of course, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, you cannot imagine that this is the cause of that. Of course not. I'm not, this is, and this is not actually what, what I'm saying. I always say that correlation does not mean causation. But the, more, the, the, the interesting part about it is that using actually one of those variables, you can predict another variable. Example, if you will know that the suiciding by hanging and, strangula and strangulation and suffocation is correlated to, to the power of 99% with the US spending on science and technology. And this is the year 2009. If I will tell you in the year 2011, forget about 2010 even, if I will tell you in the year 2011, the number of people who have uh, uh, suicide or have committed suicide by hanging strangulation and suffocation in the US is uh, let's say 8,000. Can you predict the number of U.S. spending on science, space, and technology? Actually, yes. 
it doesn't make any sense. I mean, this correlation doesn't mean doesn't mean anything in, in reality, in physical world, but there is a good use for it. So you can correlate and you can say, well, there is no reason that it will not be following the same correlation because I have studied since 1999 and it's for 10 years has been following the same trend. So I can imagine, I can tell you, if you will tell me how much people committed suicide in the year 2010 or 2011 or 2012, I can tell you how much the US is spending on science, space and technology. The same thing goes for number of people who drown by falling into a pool is correlated by the number of films Nicolas Cage appeared in. Per capita cheese consumption and the number of people who died by becoming strangled in their uh, bed sheet. Divorce rate in mine per capita consumption of uh, margarine. Age of Miss America, murders by steam, hot vapor, and hot object. A lot of those correlations that are driven actually by data doesn't make absolutely no sense at all, but they are still are very use, useful, useful. And we can actually use them to predict some, uh, uh, so some other variables. So don't be, um, don't be surprised if I will come tomorrow and tell you, I know how much will you spend today because I have uh, calculated the number of uh, childbirth that happened in, uh, uh, let's say, France over the past two hours. And if you ask me, how would you, how would you do that? I would tell you it's simply correlation, it's simply data. I was able to prove that there is a correlation, for example, be, between the, the amount of uh, expenditure per day per, for, for a person called uh, X, called Yali, called Yasser, called John, whatever, and the number of uh, deaths, for example, uh, by car accidents that happens every day in France. There are no relationship between the two. There are no causation between the two. But the world that we are living in, with the randomness that we are living in, proves that there is apparently a mathematical, I would say random relation between the two. And we can actually use that uh, mathematical function. This is the power of data. This is the power of things that we will continue to see in the future, that we will actually, that it will actually expand in the future. I mean, we expect that those kind of correlation would expand in the future, that we will be able actually to relate everything to everything. So we'll be able to predict almost every behavior for every uh, person. Just give us the time, just give me some time to uh, correlate it and to understand how it is uh, correlated with something else. I invite you really to go to the internet and look for, uh, for th those kind of correlation because it's, um, it's a trend in, in, in data analysis now that once we have captured a lot of data about everyone, how can we use it? How can we make use of it? And this is uh, one of the things that we do. The, the other type of, of, of data analysis that is in expansion, in full expansion these days, is the time series. And actually, it's not new. It's, it's old. It's a very old uh, uh, data analysis tool, the time series. But these days, it shows a lot of expansion because there's a lot of technology development that is, uh, is behind. What is time series? Time series, I've made um, yeah, a search here, and this is Wikipedia, and it's time series. And I search just for time series, and I have it here. Time series is, is the type of data, is the, actually, is the index of the stock market. And you will understand that the index of the stock market has been practiced since, maybe since the time there was a stock market, since time there was uh, a stock exchange. Since the time, maybe, I, I would say that maybe since 16th or 17th century. It's very old. And people used to put the data one after the other. So day one, the price of my stock was $15, and then $16, and then $13, and then $14, and then $20, and then, and then, and then. And then it's, I mean, it, it might look like this, for example. Forget about the titles now, I'm, I'm not. But let's take this blue, this red line as, the price of a stock. 
whatever that stock is. I don't know what's, what's, what's that stock. But um, people were interested actually to look into those, the development of this curve. How is it developed? Is it, do you see a trend on, on, I mean, that's the question that they were asking themselves. Do you see a trend? Can we predict where this action will go tomorrow? Will it go up or will it go down? And if it will go up, how much up will it go? If it go down, how much down will it go? And an explosion actually of, uh, uh, of, of data, explosion of tools that uh, you can find a lot of them here and how, how, how things are, are done. I don't know what data is about. But anyway, I mean, this is like uh, something going on and then there is a trend. And actually, this is, this is one of the outputs of, of, of the stock market. I mean, I mean, it started with the stock market, but uh, this is one of, this, that was one of the outputs that no matter, I mean, a person would not really care about what will happen tomorrow to the stock uh, price, but what's more important for him or for her is the general trend. Is this stock gaining momentum or is this stock gaining momentum, gaining money? or this stock is actually uh, losing momentum, losing money. So if I would like to invest my money in, in one of the stocks, my interest would be that I would like to go to a stock that is going up, not a stock that is uh, go going down. And there has been a lot of tools, a lot of people that have spent their time and their fortune uh, working on, um, on the time series. And in recent years, actually, in recent days, uh, we started actually seeing a lot of, that's why I say it's, it's very important now, we started seeing a lot of um, different interpretation of the data, like uh, different fitting of that data. Um, a curve like that going up and down, up and down, up and down, doesn't make any sense. But uh, using wave theory, using um, chaos theory, using uh, maybe um, trigonometric, trigonometric functions, maybe we would be able to simulate this curve. And once we will be able to simulate that curve, we will be able to understand uh, its future. It's more or less like the regression analysis, but it's uh, the, 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 the main factor that plays something here is time. It's not, uh, it's not something else. I mean, we know that there are, there are other factors that are affecting, for example, the, 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 the price. But usually when we do that, when we do the analysis, we don't look, we only Hello, I think I was cut. I think I was cut, now I'm back. Okay, so uh, it comes back. Um, so the shopping basket analysis, uh, let me start the share. Uh, desktop share. Yes, I'm back. So I'm, I'm sharing here back again. And um, shopping basket analysis is, is, is a new trend in data analysis. Actually, it was the start of data mining. And um, if you look into this, I mean, it's, you will realize that it's very, um, I mean, we use it every day. It's, it happens to us every day. What's market basket analysis? Market basket analysis is the fact that Okay, you go to a supermarket 
after work. Today we are uh, Saturday, so uh, Saturday there's no work. So I have in my home the habit to go to the um, supermarket every Saturday in order to purchase some groceries and some fruits and, and things for my family. Okay, now I'm not the only one who's doing that. There are like 1,000 other people who are doing the same thing also on Saturday. The idea of the market, market, market uh, basket analysis is that if, if I have 1,000 people going to a supermarket in a day and every one of them is buying something, is buying, uh, let's say, five items, some will buy 10 items, some will buy three items. But if I will be able to find a trend in the purchase of items of those 1,000 people, I can actually do a lot of things with it. I'll give you an example. Here is the example that we have here. So we have person one who went and, and bought bread and milk, person two who bought bread, diapers, beer and eggs, three milk diapers and so on and so forth. Well, what I can do actually is, I can do, I can start doing association. People who purchase diapers, they usually purchase beer and that's appearing here. I mean, everyone who, who own, almost everyone who, who purchased diapers, they purchased also beer. So this is one of, the, one, of, one of the associations. So the next time that I have a huge uh, stock of diapers that I would like to, uh, to sell in my supermarket, I would actually put it beside the beer uh, slot or the, beside the beer uh, place where, where, where people will, will pick up their beer. Why? Because I know that they will, be, will, will when, when they will buy this, they usually will, will buy that as well. So that's, that, that, that's one thing. The other thing is that I can also uh, find trends in the data and I can predict what will happen to the data afterwards. I.e., um, if this is the trend of the people uh, uh, purchasing things on Saturdays, what about the people purchasing in Sundays, Mondays, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and Thursday, and Fridays? Is there a trend? Is it different? People who purchase things on Saturday are different from those. No, they're not different. Are, are they, I mean, people who purchase things on Saturdays purchase different things than those who purchase things on Sundays or Mondays or Tuesdays? This is a question that we need to ask as well. And sometimes we get very interesting information. And sometimes we are able actually to predict a lot of of, uh, uh, of, of outputs. I was um, actually working with a chain of supermarkets in, uh, in Egypt, and we were able to tell the, the, the supermarket owner that uh, um, Tuesday afternoon between four and six, you will have something like 1,000 uh, customers. And those 1,000 customers, 60% of them will most probably buy so-and-so and 40% of them will buy so-and-so, and none of them will buy so-and-so. So if he would like to make a, a promotion for one of the items that he has in, in stock, he can actually predict and he can actually tailor that, uh, 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 his, I mean, his stock and his management of his stock according to, those, uh, to, to, to the pattern of, uh, of purchase. And that actually goes, and everywhere. I mean, it started with the supermarkets. That's why, that's why it's called uh, market basket analysis. But you will see it in consumption of, um, of telecommunications. I mean, those who buy um, iPhone, they usually associate it with um, um, an expensive bundle. And usually they consume internet. And usually they consume roaming. And usually they consume so and so and so and so and so on. So, if I'm, uh, if I'm um, a telecom company like Vodafone, like Orange, like AT&T, like uh, all the big companies in the, in the world, if I will look into the consumption and the behavior of my customers, then I can actually associate them with different, uh, with, 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 with different uh, items that I'm selling. And I can actually um, tailor, uh, uh, the, 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 tailor the products to those, uh, to, to those customers. It goes for telephone companies, it goes for electrical companies, it goes for any facility company 
that you can uh, that, that you can think about and it goes as well for purchasing i mean when you go now to amazon or when you go to alibaba or when you do your purchase on the internet usually the system will tell you those who have bought that item they have also bought those three items so it is telling you that it's not only that you will buy i don't know bread through amazon but if you will buy bread through Amazon, it will tell you, by the way, those who bought bread, they have bought also milk. So what do you think? And it will also, of course, it will, it will of course tell you, it will give you some incitements on, 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 on buying it. So we call this the association rules, the association of, of items together. But uh, from a data analysis point of view, we call it, I mean, the, the, the first time that we've heard about something like this, was called the market basket analysis. And it's very trendy in, um, in the data these days. And the more that we have data, the more that we purchase things over the internet, the more that we have data about our behavior, the more that we will be able also to give uh, information about it and to reason, uh, to reason about it. Now, um, the one before last uh, uh, here is case-based reasoning. And case-based reasoning is also uh, very important. I mean, I have, it's very trendy as well. I've searched it also over, over the internet. Here you have case-based reasoning over Wikipedia. And you will read here that, well, apparently behaviors, I mean, system behaviors are more or less the same. And human behavior are more or less the same. Uh, animal behaviors are more or less the same. So. If you have, a, if you have a, a new case, if you have something new, uh, that goes, of course, for medicine, it goes also for oil wells, it goes for, I mean, diff different things. Um, if you have a case and you don't have, and you don't know what's the solution for it, maybe you can search for the literature and maybe you can reason as what happened before. Of course, the, the, the people who invented that were the lawyers where you have a case, that's why it's, case, it's called case-based reasoning. So you have a case in court and the case in court, I mean, the, the judge have judged that uh, if this happened and this happened and this happened, then my judgment will be so-and-so. So if in the future you will have the same case or a similar case, more or less similar case, you can reason based on that, uh, on, on that old reasoning. It goes for lawyers, it goes for courts, but it goes also for humanities, it goes for medicine, it goes for reasoning on um, oil wells, uh, on uh, a prediction of amount of, uh, of oil that I would find in a trap uh, uh, in, in the underground, in a, in a reservoir. I mean, it goes for many, 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 many things. There is always a good reason to go back and look into other cases, other similar cases, and if you will be able to identify a perfect match between your case and the other case that has been solved before, then there is no reason that the solution for your case would not be the same solution as the one that happened uh, before. Of course, if you will be able to have the, the perfect match with that one. So that's the case-based reasoning. And it's also very trendy. And again, with the amount of data that we have uh, uh, over the internet, I mean, imagine that in the past, you should have looked into like piles and piles and piles of, of books about uh, court cases and decisions by judges that has been given in different like 50 states in the US, for example, in order to find a, a matching case. But today, with all this is stored uh, uh, over uh, in, in data banks, it's very easy stored and of course indexed as well. Um, it's very easy to look and to search into it and then to find uh, similarities with, uh, with, with those cases. And in this, I think uh, uh, clustering could be also very useful. Now, the last one that I, was, that I would like to speak about is spatial, uh, spatial data analysis or spatial data analysis. Sometimes we call it geographical data analysis, but spatial is the more scientific, uh, scientific way of, of, uh, of thinking about it. And um, I think that I made this uh, correlation this time is case. Yes, spatial data analysis. And spatial data analysis means that 
your data has a geographical meaning, has, a, has an XY, whatever that XY would be. It could be XY within your body. It could be XY within the world. It could be XY within a city. It could be XY within a street, whatever. But your data has a special distribution. We call this a uh, special distribution. It's the GIS, the Geographical Information System that maybe some of you would know about. Um, I, I also have it. I mean, a, a lot of people around the world who use the, the tools of a company called Esri. Um, I use a tool called uh, QGIS that you can see it here on my desktop. It's also an openware and open software that you can download from the internet and you can use, and it gives you a lot of, um, a lot of possibilities. Uh, um, a spatial data analysis is like this one. This is like uh, what? Spread of bubonic plague in Europe. Wow. So this is the spread of the plague in Europe. Um, over the years 1347 until 1351 and after. So how the plague was spreading. And this gives you a lot of different information, actually. Um, you, can, you can look into the, the, the spreading, how the spreading is affecting people. I mean, where is it going, left or right, up and down, and so on and so forth. And of course, uh, I mean, if you, if you use uh, special data analysis, you can do analysis like, uh, I mean, if you have data points, then you, sometimes we, we are interested to know in this area, how many criminals are there? In this area, how many oil wells did I do? In this area, what are the characteristics of the reservoir that, that is in there? And of course, you can reason highly on that. I mean, if you have a for example, if you have a map of the Gulf area with all the oil wells and, uh, and, um, and the gas wells and, and the quality of, um, of, um, of, of, of the oil and the gas, that is, the natural gas that is extracted, um, you can just simply, I would like to know how much oil and gas exist in this, uh, in this area, the Gulf area. And well, you can, using uh, a data analysis, tool like, like, like this, you can, you can have the, the answer in three, four minutes. How many uh, oil wells are produced in, in Saudi Arabia or in this area of Saudi Arabia, on this area of, of, of the Emirates or in this area of Kuwait and, and so on and so forth. It's, it's a very interesting uh, tool. And it also has, I mean, a combination between visual tool, a visual tool and a data analysis tool. So. That's the, the both of them. The tool that I use for that, I, I showed you last, last time, Tableau. Um, and let me just open that, uh, uh, that, that, that file that I started actually the first, maybe I think it was, this, yeah, it was the first webinar when we started at the beginning. Uh, participants, yes. Uh, So I go back to Tableau. Yes. And I had here, where is it? A map. Yes. That's the map of the participants in that course. Those are the people who have uh, registered for this course at the beginning. And I have just, uh, I have a data, uh, a data matrix that you can see it. Here, and you have time, time stamp, name of people, and, and so on and so forth. And you have like one, 1,600 uh, plus uh, data points. And the idea was to, to, to try to see how many of them are, uh, I mean, which country do they come from? And I can proudly say that I have people from, I mean, we have people in this course from all around the world from the six continents. I mean, this graph is for me very, uh, very uh, satisfactory because it shows that there is an interest, well, with uh, more or less different degrees, but there is an interest in this course or, or, in, that, or in that topic at least. And there are people who are uh, actually registering for, uh, or, or registering, yes, for, for that course from uh, different countries around the world. So as I said, it's, um, it's a visual way to see things, but 
it shows that, I mean, uh, I mean, it proves that the data have a special uh, dimension. And this special dimension is what makes the, the, the tool called special data analysis. Now, I will, I will actually stop here, not because there is nothing more to be said about trending or new or other techniques. It's because at some point of time, someone has to stop. I mean, I can, I mean, we can continue with the data analysis forever. I mean, there are like, I wouldn't be exaggerating if I would say that yeah, every week or every other week, there is a new tool, there is a new uh, technique of data analysis that is uh, developing here and there. And sometimes people develop techniques and tools that are suitable for one domain or another. I would not be surprised. I mean, I, I've seen it actually with the COVID-19 at the beginning that there was actually an international competition to develop uh, a tool for uh, data analysis for COVID-19, only for COVID-19. So you put the data of COVID-19, it gives you uh, something. Like that. I didn't actually follow what, what were the outcome of that international competition, but I imagine that it was, uh, it was successful. And this is just an, an example. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if some of you or one of you, I, I don't know it, but if one of you will come and say, well, you know, my company, we work in the oil and gas field and we have this tool for data analysis and we use it since long time. Well, okay, fine. That's, 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 that's very good. That's, not, uh, that's actually expected. Um, as I said before, at, at some point of time, I was working also in the uh, data analysis for the oil and gas field. And um, we didn't develop our own tools, but we used off-shelf tools to, um, to cater for uh, some of the problems that we had with our, uh, with, with our customers. Um, I, I would imagine that some of those customers have taken that those uh, those tools on board, and then they have developed their own their own ways. Um, those of us who are working in the uh, construction field, or in the chemical field, or the or in the uh, uh, mining engineering fields, um, they should have also developed their own tools for for, for data analysis. So I'm I'm stopping here, not because there is nothing more to be said, but because. Well, I'm trying to be very generic and, and speak about things that happen um, everywhere. Now, one word at the, at the end, I have really to thank you very much, uh, those who have attended this course, those who have had the stamina to stay until the end. Um, sometimes concepts and mathematics were, uh, I know, were not easy, but this is how, 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 how things are. Um, I know that there was uh, some that were, there were some delays in in posting the quizzes for the uh, for the past lectures, and I take this uh, as my fault. It's my mistake actually. Um, but um, I know that we have now at least five quizzes that you need to to uh, to, to answer for every lecture, and then there will be the uh, final exam that I think uh, Dr. Ahmed, maybe and Jomana, maybe there will be the two people telling us about how this will go from, um, from now on. But for me, I have uh, finished this course and I have said all what I wanted to say. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Yasser, for this enlightening session. Now we'll move on to answering some questions um, asked by our honorable audience. Uh, so someone says, what caused the statisticians to um, even think about correlating these unrelatable variables um, and doing the correlations between them? What to write them to correlate between them? Well, you know, sometimes when, I, when I'm sitting at home and uh, over a weekend and I have nothing to do, sometimes I also do some nonsense correlation between between variables it's a human curiosity looking into things that are not correlated or asking a system what is correlated i mean you have like a huge database what is correlated with what and you just ask questions like that so that's one reason that's one reason the other reason is as i said in my uh, in, in the talk the the ability to predict can i use i mean Humanity is always um, obsessed by knowing what will happen in the future. 
So uh, we, some of the statisticians will take uh, this correlation as a tool for prediction in the future. And it doesn't make sense, but it works. Mm -hmm. um, are the statistics and data analysis in the current pandemic an example to see the pattern around the world, or does it have a more interpretive approach, like uh, why it's high in a current in a certain area, or why it's low in another area? And uh, do they find a way to mitigate its spreading by quantitative data analysis? Well. Um uh, I would say yes, yes and no. Sometimes, um, but cor I mean, we uh, uh, we know that um, a pandemic is always and will be always using. I will be always following a logistic regression. So it will go up and then it will go. Uh, it, it will go down. Now, how to adjust our model? and how to predict what will happen in, in, um, in a specific country or around the world, this is a very difficult question. Now, to use correlation and to use correlation among variables, among different variables, uh, this is also doable. I mean, uh, you definitely have, have seen it. At, at the beginning, uh, many scientists were speaking about a vaccine of tuberculosis, that countries who have practiced uh, vaccines of tuberculosis, they have less cases than... Um, than, than the others. And that, I mean, you can look at it from a, a nonsense correlation point of view, but why not? Why don't we think about that? I mean, let's, let's just put this hypothesis. And then it happened also that we had also another hypothesis saying that uh, countries with high uh, temperature, uh, like heat waves, they have less, uh, uh, they have less uh, cases of, 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 of pandemic. So, I mean, we tried actually, uh, we, and when I say we, we, I mean, I'm speaking about humanities. Uh, we tried to, um, to correlate different variables with the spread of the pandemic in a certain area. Um, some, of this, some of them have succeeded. Some of them have just proved to be complete nonsense. Um, and of course, you know about uh, uh, hydroxychloroquine and uh, some of the vaccines, some of the medicines that were said at some point of time that they are affecting positively or negatively the, uh, the spread of the virus. And then with time, it proved that it's completely, uh, completely wrong. Or uh, some other people speaking about uh, uh, detergent, using, using detergent to, uh, I mean, to, to clean or to, to, to even to... To, to put them inside your body in order to, to kill the virus. So we, we tried to, to find those correlations. And, um, and this is the way, I mean, this is the beginning of how can we, you can actually develop a vaccine. Sometimes you develop a vaccine because you've observed something that doesn't make sense, but then it works uh, at, at the end. So, I mean, to answer your question specifically, uh, yes, we can use correlations to, uh, to predict the, the spread of the virus. And if we will be able to predict the spread of the virus, then we'll be able to stop it. Then we'll be able to reverse the, the, the trend. Mm -hmm. uh, someone says, can the information be cut before being repeated? I think it's similar to regression. Uh, can the information uh, before the cut happen be repeated? Um, un until, we, until we have something different, until we have another proof, that's yes. Yes, of course, information can be, could be repeated uh, after, I mean, after the cut. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, th that's about it for the question to th questions today. It was a pleasure having you today uh, on Pi Petro and for the past few weeks, Dr. Yasser, thanks for joining us. Uh, this was definitely a very insightful session and thank you everyone for tuning in with us today. Dr. Yasser, we hope to have you again in the future. Thanks again. Inshallah. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Have a good day.